In this tutorial, we're going to create the scabbard that goes with the sword that we modeled in the previous tutorial. So we'll need the sword and the template to do so. Now I've turned on my template and I've selected the sword. And I'm going to duplicate the sword by hitting Command D. And I'll drag this out so we can see this a little easier. We've already got the basic shape we need just by the sword itself, so we're just going to repurpose that model. Now the first thing I'm going to do is add a new texture to it though. So I'll right click and choose Assign New Material, and I'll put the usual Arnold AI Standard Surface on it. I'm going to delete the handle and use what's above this. So I'm going to zoom in on the bottom. I'll right click and choose Face, and I'm going to drag the faces up through the hand guard on the handle, and I'll hit Delete. With the handle deleted and back in the object mode, I'm going to put this into position and start to rework this model to accommodate the shape we need for the scabbard. So I'll start by using my scale tool and I'll increase the width and the length. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom of the shape. And I'm starting to use, I'm going to use these polygon faces here for where there probably was a belt of some kind going through the scabbard. So I'm far on the keyboard, I'll right click, choose vertex, I'll select the vertices from this area, and I'll move them up into position, and I'll probably start to scale them. And I'm more concerned about the scale of the width with pieces like this, because a texture map is going to give us the actual uh, bit of reality that textures will give a simple piece of geometry. So I'm not too concerned about uh, the exactness of the model. All right, so now I'll start to move some of these others up into position. And I'm going to make sure that I bring the vertices, and I'm going to try to keep them all parallel, straight across. I'm going to put these up kind of like this, and it's straight across there. And if I need to, I'll move that back down. And now I'll scale these out to the edge of my template and start to move the bottom ones up as well. And I'm going to scale those to get kind of the width I need for the opening of the scabbard. And I'm going to go up to the top now. And I'll go to the very top and I'm going to move all these vertices right here down using my move tool. And then I'll bring these up and this is really a very fluid kind of a thing. Everybody's got their own approach, perhaps. But you can see what I'm doing now is just repositioning everything we had previously made in the context of the sword itself. So the scabbard's got that flat tip on top. So I'll take the opportunity to use what I have here for that as well. And now we've got the tip for the scabbard. I'll go down, I'm going to start working on the opening here. And once again, I'll get the vertices. I'm doing this symmetrically, so I'm, there's pretty much an even editing on either side. I'll put that there. This one will come down to about here. And now I'm going to start introducing some edge loops to add a little bit more geometry. I'm doing this very sparing. If I look in the left-hand corner of the user interface, I can see I've only got 60 poly faces on this, which is really very good. So we want to be mindful of that number because uh, just like the sword, this is for a game environment. So we want a low poly count. Let the texture map do all the work. I'll go to my object mode. I'm going to click on my edge loop tool. If you recall, the edge loop tool could be gotten by going to mesh tools and insert edge loop tool. If it's on your shelf already, you'll see a box that's cut into four quarters and then an orange line going through it. So I'll click on that and I'm going to start by adding a path right here. And you can see it's following the shape of my geometry. Once again, I'll take the edge loop tool and I'm going to add this little bit of a ridge here. And I'm starting by putting some edges in where there are prominent bulges in the geometry. Probably put one in here. And I'm going to work this tip a little because it does have a kind of a pronounced dip inside here. So 
I'll put an edge in here like so. I'll get my move tool and I'll scale that in a bit. I'll pull it up. And I probably will put one more edge loop there. I'm hitting G on the keyboard to access the tools I'm using frequently. And I'll put one last set here and then right here. Now we're going to go back down to the bottom of the scabbard opening and we're going to start to use our polygon extrude tool to add these little bumps in the front view. Now before I do extrude, I'm going to cut the geometry to accommodate this little diamond shape that appears at the opening of the scabbard. I think it's kind of a nice detail we should add. And I'm going to use the modeling toolkit to do that. You can get the modeling toolkit by going up to the right hand corner of the user interface you'll see a little icon with a hammer and a cube. And when you click on that, this is what you'll see. I'm going to click on the multi-cut tool. It looks like a number 11 X-Acto knife. And I'll start by going to my perspective view. And I'll go kind of in the middle. And I'm going to click on these lines, hitting return, and then hitting G and clicking on the tool again. And I'll split this up to about here. I'll come down and click here. And I'll drop these in. And then I can always adjust them afterwards. And I'm going to the corner here because it's not a good idea really to keep edges kind of floating. The center one will be all right, but the ones that are being on the side, I'm gonna kind of go over to where there's an intersection. Go, and I'll go around and I'll do the same on the other side. So I've turned off my template and I'll do the same thing. Once I've introduced all the paths I need, I'm going to go to the, the front view of the scabbard and I'll just line these up so they're symmetrical through the entire piece of geometry. So to do so, I'll right click and I'll choose vertex. And then I'll just start to put these in as evenly as possible. pretty good. Now I'm going to return to my front view and I'll right click choose vertex and I'll grab the vertices through the geometry and start to pull up. And you can see now we're introducing that element that we need for the V. I'll turn on my template and I'll just tune this a little bit more closely to the art itself. There'll always be a discrepancy between the template and the actual geometry but to get a quick result here I'm using the template as the texture map as well. Now we're ready to extrude these areas where there's a bit of a bump based on that template slash texture map. So I'll go back to my object mode and I'm going to my perspective view. I'll turn off my template for a moment. And I'm going to select the faces now that I want to put an extrusion on. So I'll right click and choose face. And I'll start to shift select these elements all the way around.
and very often it's a good idea to hit 4 on the keyboard to make sure you haven't accidentally selected a face you didn't want to. So I've got the ridge I want. I'll click on my extrude tool and I'm going to click on the blue dial on the extrude tool. I'll get the scale tool and I'll scale it out in all directions. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more width now and then with the y-axis I'll taper it and maybe I'll move it down a bit. So at this point you're kind of customizing the shape you're looking for. Now let's go up to the next ridge. Now this ridge is off so I'm going to go to the front view of the model and I'll go to my vertexes. I'll put my template on so I can use it for reference and I'll start by lining up the outside edges and I'm looking for two parallel lines essentially comprised of all those vertices and it's a matter of putting them roughly into position. And now I'll select that ridge of faces. I can just select right through in the front view. I'll click on the extrude tool, center it once again, get the extrude tool scale, pull them all out in each direction, and maybe I'll taper it down a bit. And I'm going to do it to this area and this area, and then when I return, we'll add the diamond shape that appears at the bottom of the scabbard. Now that we've added our polygon extrusions all the way down, we're going to go down to the bottom. And now we'll introduce that diamond shape that appears at the very base of the scabbard. And I'm going to go in and make a couple of adjustments here, trying to keep it as close as I can to the nature of the template. And I'll just move these up. And I'm going to go to my perspective view. And we're going to be extruding the edges of this little divot we put in there. So I'll right click and choose edge. And I'll start in this view and I'll select this path. I'll select that edge. I'll select this edge. I'll go around to the other side. Select this one. And this one. And I'm going to hit 4 on the keyboard to make sure I haven't selected any others than those four. Now I'll return to the front view of the model. And I'll click on my extrude tool. I'll center it. And I'll pull those faces down. I'm going to put the template back on so I know how far to go with this. Because the middle vertex will be the tip of the diamond. So I'll stop there. Right click choose vertex, select through both sides, get my move tool, and I'll pull that up like that. And next I want to extrude a couple of faces on either side to give it a little bit more dimension rather than that flatness. Right now it's pretty flat. So I'll return to my faces, I'll select to have diamonds on either side and I'll click on my extrude tool I'll center it on my x-axis I'll take the scale tool and pull out and then I'll taper them now we're ready to use planar mapping to put the texture on the geometry I'm going to W on the keyboard and I can see that my x-axis is the axis that I need to plot the UV map on. So I'll delete my type history and hold down the space bar. I'll go to UV and I'll go to planar mapping. And I'm going to make sure that X is select, I'll hit apply. Now in my channel window I have to make sure that the projection width and height are the same. I'm going to choose 7 for that. And I'll return to my object mode. 
I'll go to my UV texture editor. Now, if you don't see that, you can go to UV, UV editor. It is the little green box with the checkerboard in it. So when I click on that, I'm going to see my texture. Now, I didn't put the checkerboard on this because it's pretty straightforward. And as long as the width and height projection are the same, then we've got the proportions we need. But you can see it's kind of hanging outside the top and the bottom. So first I'll go to image. First I'll go to view, shaded. I'll right click, choose UV shell, select the scabbard, hit R on the keyboard, scale it to fit inside. I'll now right click on my geometry in the viewport, return to the object mode, deselect and select again. In the UV editor, I'm going to go to image, UV snapshot. I would set the aspect ratio for whatever I needed. I've set it for 1024 by 1024 because I'm using a texture that's really kind of a low resolution so it won't be compromised too much. I'll browse to my project window. I'll save, apply and close. Next we'll go into Photoshop and we'll put the texture on our geometry. 